I have this, this old school philosophy that there's very little that's new out there. Uh, you mentioned measurement, and I think it, it applies there as well. I think about the old days where it was all, all about reach, frequency, and GRPs. Just how many people were you hitting? How often were you hitting them? Were you hitting a few people a lot, or a lot of people infrequently, and so on? I think those basic media metrics haven't changed. And I think as a lot of companies, as a lot of experts start moving towards things like engagement and trying to create new measures, often to replace, if not supplement, uh, the old measures, I think that's a mistake. I think in some sense they're putting the cart before the horse. And it's, it's important just to focus on, do we want penetration? Or rather, do we want reach? Do we want frequency? And really understanding uh, that trade-off uh, really well before going to a, a more subtle, harder to measure layer such as engagement. I would agree with you. Things like reach, frequency, and GRP should play a greater prominence today because they're actually more measurable. I think though it's an empirical open question as to whether there is some engagement metric out there. And when I say an engagement metric, the way I'm utilizing it is it's a metric for something, meaning maybe there may be one metric that's useful for likelihood of coming back to the site. Maybe there's another metric that's useful for commerce. Maybe there's another metric that's useful for generating recommendations. I don't think there's one engagement metric that someone will create that'll basically cut across all the different things firms are trying to accomplish, which as you mentioned, sometimes your goal is penetration. Sometimes your goal is depth. You'd like people to see it frequently. So I think the answer is, there, how can there possibly be one metric when basically 40 years of marketing has shown that there are multiple metrics? And I think it's a shame that the, these different sub-metrics are all being thrown under the name engagement. And I think it's basically uh, breaking the camel's back. People are just, or at least people like me and some others, are rejecting the whole notion because you're trying to measure so many different things at once. I think if people could get exactly as you said, if they came up with different measures, different labels for each of those different kinds of behaviors they're trying to capture, rather than rolling them all together, uh, I think we'd all be better off. But those new, finer metrics still have to take a backseat to plain old reach and frequency. Have you seen anything that suggests that those things are actually predictive of something? Like imagine you're, you know, we're sitting here in a down economic time and, and you're trying to evaluate the value of their social network. Do you have any, like, confidence that reach frequency, those traditional metrics, will actually be tied at all to the future cash revenue streams? Because let's go back to old school, which is, let's not talk about what a VC might put a number on something about. Let's talk about the value of a firm as being the discounted cash flows of future revenue streams. Any thoughts about, I mean, I'm not convinced that reach frequency, all of those things are that highly predictive of what the future revenue streams will be. Because I'm not sure they know how to monetize those revenue streams regardless. That's a fair point. And I, I wouldn't dare suggest to, to go from, from basic, simple metrics as reach and frequency all the way out to the value of a firm or its customers. And I think, unfortunately, a lot of people are making such claims. But I think it is important to think about the predictive characteristics of some of those simple measures. And go back to the, the old days, like you were alluding to, when data was really sparse. Yeah. And uh, companies would have just these very limited metrics. They wouldn't get them very often. They'd be stuck with a limited set of numbers until the new books came in two months later, and it would really force them to squeeze more value out of those few numbers. It would really force them to play connect the dots to try to predict what the next set of reach and frequency numbers are going to look like. And when those new numbers came around, they would say, huh, how do our predictions compare to the reality? What have we learned about both behavior as well as measurement? And today, people aren't doing that. Uh, today, uh, they're just they're drinking from a fire hose and they're so busy. Just, just summarize today's numbers for me. Don't tell me about the past because it's a, that was a different world. Uh, so there's much less focus on this, these notions of, of prediction and, and patterns over time than there used to be, even though the data are a lot better than they were before.